Hey, hi, I'm in the lab here with all of the models that will be showing up on the lab practical exam. Um, almost all the, the, answer, the questions on the lab practical are the um, identification of parts, blood vessels primarily, and then a few of the endocrine structures. Occasionally there will be a question about how uh, something might work. There will also be some questions from those three labs, or actually the four labs we did, the endocrine lab with the, lab with the rats, um, the uh, blood pressure, pulse rate velocity, um, and the blood counting and hematocrit kind of, kind of lab. So be, uh, go through those carefully enough that you could answer some general questions about those. But right now I'm going to try to hold up these various models up to the camera and see if I can give you a good idea of what it's going to look like um, for the lab and make sure you know where everything is. Now I've made this list that is on your site there and I may add one or two things to it and I'll tell you when, I'm, when I get there. But these are the ones I want you to concentrate on. These are the structures that I'm um, most likely to ask about on the lab practical. There are a lot more than this in your lab manual and you will be encountering some others on top hat with the exercises they have you do there. But be sure that you know these because these are, are you know, most of your questions are going to come from this sheet and it's on your, it's on your Canvas site. Okay, so we're going to start with some real basics. Um, we start with the aortic arch. The blood's leaving the heart, so the, the aortic arch is here. The brachiocephalic trunk is on, only on the right side. That comes out as a single blood vessel, but then it splits into a carotid artery, a common carotid, and a subclavian artery. Okay, Here they're already split. You have your carotid and your subclavian artery already separate when they leave the heart. Now the aorta itself moves on down. See if I can get it here. So it, the aortic arch goes over like this and then it, it, the aorta goes down the thorax between the lungs there and anytime it's above the diaphragm, it's in the thorax, it's the thoracic aorta. When it moves down a little bit farther, it becomes the abdominal aorta. Once it passes through the diaphragm, it becomes the abdominal aorta, and then it's going to split off and go to all kinds of different things. All right, now let's, before we go into the guts, Let's look at, uh, I'm going to try to go in order on here, more or less. The subclavian arteries go behind the clavicle. That's why they're called that. Subclavian arteries are behind your collarbones. So this, the brachiocephalic trunk comes off here. It becomes a carotid. It becomes a um, subclavian. This one they're already split. The inside one goes and becomes a carotid. This becomes the subclavian. As long as it's behind the collarbone, it's the subclavian artery. When it reaches the armpit, it becomes the axillary artery. Axilla is the term for armpit. Then it goes down a little bit farther and it becomes the um, brachial artery because the brachial area is the upper arm, so the brachial artery is there. It splits some more and turns into the radial artery coming down by the thumb, thumb, and the ulnar artery going down the other side. See those are going to, it helps a lot behind the collarbone, subclavian. Axillary, armpit, brachial, upper arm, radial and ulnar by the thumb and by the, by the pinky. When it reaches the hand, you have the palmar arch 
looks like one. You're, nobody misses that on the test, the palmar arch. And then the digital arteries coming off of that. There are more arteries than this, but that's what you're going to be responsible for is these major arteries. While we're here, let's go ahead and look at the veins coming back. Okay, you can have a radial vein and a, a ulnar vein. Mo most times you have something going out and it comes back, it's called something the same or, or similar. But then they change things a little bit. Um, you have a, a vein coming across your elbow. That's called the median cubital vein. It goes across this way. And this main claim to fame is that's the one, that's the one here that you always draw blood from. It crosses at the elbow and sticks up, and that's where they draw blood, set up an IV line, and that kind of stuff. So that's the median cubital. And then, of course, the radial artery goes down by the thumb. The ulnar artery comes down by the fingers. The palmar arch is across the hand. And the digital artery is going out to the fingers. OK, so that's a really good start. Let's head down toward the legs. OK, well, we have this abdominal aorta coming down here, the abdominal aorta. At the very top of it, since the liver's up here and the stomach is up here, they're up as high as you can get in the abdomen, you have the hepatic artery going to the liver and the gastric artery going to the stomach. Now here, this, at least this one shows the hepatic artery going to the liver. If I show a, an artery, red, going to the liver, that's the hepatic artery. Now, the stomach has been removed here, so you can see it. It's, I might ask something about the gastric artery, but I probably won't show it because you can't see anything until you remove the stomach, and then you can't tell where it's going. But your spleen is over here. Here's your spleen. Okay, so the splenic artery would go to the spleen. The splenic vein would come back. The renal arteries go to the kidneys, the red ones. The renal veins come back. Renal arteries, renal veins. These are a couple of interesting ones. This long, skinny one here. I hope I'm showing it. The long, skinny one here. It's going down to the ovary, okay? It's going down to the ovary. These long, windy ones are your ovarian arteries if you're a female. But if you're a male, they are the testicular arteries because this same organ becomes the testes. In a male, it descends into the scrotum, and this same artery serves it with blood. So these are your gonadal arteries. They are either ovarian or testicular arteries, depending on if you're a male or female. Okay, great. So now we're moving on down a little bit farther. We did the hepatic artery and we did the a gastric artery, go into the liver and go into the stomach. Make sure I'm still kind of in the right place here. Then you have two more big arteries coming off here. One that goes to the small intestine, one goes to the large intestine. Small intestine is on top. That's called the superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery. The mesentery is the tissue supply, nutrient, blood vessels, and everything that surrounds all of your intestines. So that instead of calling this the small intestinal artery, it's the superior mesenteric, and this is the inferior mesenteric artery. So we have renal arteries, renal veins. We have testicular ovarian artery. There's the vein coming back, testicular um, ovarian veins, superior inferior mesenteric arteries. Then it splits, and it becomes the iliac 
arteries, okay? And they go down for a, a short distance and split. This is the common, and that's the internal and external iliac arteries. The, this one, as soon as it hits the leg, becomes the femoral, the femoral artery. Okay, so here we have, you know, you see we're splitting here. We have internal and external. Then we have the femoral artery that goes all the way down the leg to here. Am I showing it? I think I am. Femoral artery. When it reaches the point right behind the knee, you can palpate that. You can f get a pulse from there. It's called the popliteal artery, and there's actually a separate little artery that comes off of this. It's right behind the knee, and if you push your finger there, you can feel it pulse. That's the popliteal artery, and it's a good one to know because if you can't get a pulse somewhere else on somebody that's injured, sometimes you can get it from the pop popliteal artery. Then, there we go, posterior tibial artery. Look, it's by the tibia, and it's on the posterior side. It's back on your calf. It becomes a plantar artery on the plantar surface. Dorsalis pedis. Pedis means foot. Dorsal foot. Dorsalis pedis on the top. And then it's the anterior tibial, tibial artery. So the same one goes around. And there's a lot of little branches that come off. But those are the posterior tibialis. You have the tibial, tibial artery, you have the um, plantar dorsalis pedis, and anterior tibial artery. What about the veins? Well, you've got an anterior tibial vein, you've got a posterior tibial vein, um, you, have a, you have a radial vein and an ulnar vein, and you've got the, um, an, the um, median cubital vein, which I pointed out, median cubital veins that you take your blood samples from. But you've got a couple of extra veins here that are different. This long thing up here, the saphenous vein, this is the great saphenous vein. This is sometimes called the lesser saphenous vein or, or something like that. This is the one I want you to know. This is the one that they take out of your leg and cut it in pieces and do um, bypass surgeries with it. You've got one on each side, on each leg. The great saphenous vein, it's a big deal. It comes all the way up here. And then you have iliac veins, and you have the inferior vena cava. Iliac veins, inferior vena cava. You have renal veins, you have hepatic veins, you've got gastric veins. Coming up here, you have subclavian veins and the superior vena cava. But they decided to give these two a different name. You got me why they decided to do that. But this one they call the basilic vein, not to be used with the basilar artery, which is in the head, the basilic vein is on the inside of their upper arm, basilic. And this one they called the cephalic vein, which is a terrible name because it means head. But they discovered that it was going toward the head and they called it the cephalic vein and the name stuck. Okay, cephalic vein, basilic vein, subclavian vein, superior vena cava. Now, going up into your head, you have your common carotid arteries that come off the trunk here or separately on this side. Okay, so these are your common carotid arteries. Coming back, you have your jugular veins. They're going to bring it back, bring the blood back from the head. The common carotid breaks into an internal and an external carotid. The internal goes inside your head and serves your brain. The ex external goes on the outside of your skull and serves your scalp. So common carotid, internal, external carotid. And we'll look at those more specifically here. 
Here's another picture that might show up. Here's the brachiocephalic trunk. Here we have, so this is a common carotid. That's a common carotid. These become the subclavians. You can see the main, the left main, left circumflex, and anterior descending, and the RCA coming off the right side. Okay, so remember those from, from before. Um, I'm not going to ask about coronary arteries on this test because I already tested you on that before. So now, let's see if I've missed anything. Posterior tibial, anterior tibial, dorsalis pedis, uh, deep plant, uh, plantar arteries, or deep plantar arteries are on the plantar side. Um, cephalic veins, basilic veins, iliac veins, great saphenous veins. Okay, so here we have a common carotid artery coming up here. Breaks into the external carotid and the internal carotid. The internal carotid is going into your brain. The external carotid is going to come out here and spread out and cover your scalp. And if I can get these to kind of line up a little bit, it will work a little better. Eh, good enough. The superficial, superficial temporalis or temporal artery is on the outside on the, tempor on the uh, temporal bone. Whoops, here I am. Superficial temporal. Comes up the outside right across the temporal bone. Frontal artery and occipital artery going back here. If I point back here, I'm not going to give you the names of eight of these tiny ones. I might say, is this frontal, temporal, or occipital artery? Well, if it's on the occipital bone, it's the occipital artery. The facial artery. Now, you've got some various arteries going into the face, but the facial artery comes up from the bottom and goes across the jaw and then up, and it splits and covers the lower part of your face here, all the way up to here, and then it joins with some other stuff here. So the facial artery is the one that comes across the crook of your jaw here and comes up this way. There's the facial artery. This is the mental artery. Remember, mental part is the chin, it goes through that little mental foramen, that little tiny hole in your chin, okay, to nourish bone and all that kind of stuff in there. So the mental artery, facial artery, external carotid, superficial temporal, frontal, and occipital. Those make sense. And of course, your carotid, I mean, your jugular veins coming back, they don't even put the veins on that model, but the jugular veins are really easy to see. They're also external and internal. You know, some of it comes from your brain and some of it comes from your scalp, but the common jugular or the common carotid is, is the big one where it comes there. Once you get inside your head, there are a couple of really important ones. This is an old model, but in some cases it shows a little better. Here's a newer model. I guess it's prettier anyway. Okay, so if you're looking from the kind of from the back of the head, your your internal carotids come up here. And they join in with this structure here that looks like a centipede. You can see all those little arteries coming off of it. Okay, that's the basal artery. And it sends numerous little blood vessels out into the cerebellum and into the, the occipital lobe and so forth. So... The basal artery kind of is about an inch long, and it kind of looks like a centipede. 
Then above that, you have this round bunch of connecting arteries called the circle of Willis. The circle of Willis. And it accomplishes a couple of things. One thing is that it delivers blood to a lot of places. But it also gives you backup. If you get a blockage here, the blood can get there from here. It's a little bit of a backup system. A blockage over here, you would think maybe it would not go here at all, but look, there's something across there. So the circle of Willis is a circular structure of blood vessels in the brain. It's attached to the basal or artery on the back. And then, uh, oh, these, these two guys sticking straight back off of here, those are the posterior cerebral arteries. Posterior cerebral arteries. Okay? So, once again, they're going toward the back of the head. This is the frontal bone up here. And these arteries are going to go up here, and they're going to supply the nose and the optic arteries um, and so forth. But the ones you're mainly going to have to know are the basal artery, your circle of Willis, your posterior cerebral arteries. These are big ones. Now, if you get, if, if you're in the hospital and somebody comes in with a stroke, if it's one this big, they're in real trouble. But it might be a branch of the posterior cerebral artery. So you'll know where it is. You'll know what it looks like. These are the biggest main arteries, and they're the ones I want you to know for this class, along with the mental, facial, frontal, uh, superficial, temporal, occipital, the external carotid doing the outside, the internal carotid doing the inside, the jugular vein bringing it back. Oh, the other thing, these arteries going down the vertebrae, one thing that comes off that basal artery, here's our centipede, I'm looking at it from the other direction now, but look, there's the, our centipede, the two bottom ones go down and become your vertebral arteries. And those are really important because they take blood all the way down your spinal cord and nourish the spinal cord all the way down to the bottom. And they go through the vertebral foramen, foramina. And therefore, they're really easy to identify on a test. If I had an arrow pointing to this guy, it'd be really easy. It's in the vertebrae, it's a vertebral artery. I think I've pretty much covered everything. If there's anything you have a question with, you can give me a, a, an email or, or ask about it on the, on the blog would be a good way to do it and kind of answer each other's questions on it. The other thing on this list is I'm going to want you to be able to identify the um, endocrine structures. So besides answering maybe a couple of things about our rat that we, our virtual rats that we dealt with, you might be asked simply to identify, um, because in the, in the uh, lecture exam, we're going to talk, I mean, we're going to cover the, the uh, function of all the endocrine glands. Um, but here, you're probably going to have to identify them. Well, I don't have a brain at all. No, here, for, to show you. But um, you remember where the hypothalamus is in a right right above the pituitary, and then the pituitary. So you've got the hypothalamus, the pituitary stalk, and the pituitary. You know, the pineal gland is kind of on the back, so be able to recognize those. Um, the thyroid gland, real easy. It's right under your um, Adam's apple here, the thyroid gland. Adrenal glands, right on top of the kidneys, adrenals. If you get these questions, they're going to be real easy for you. Of course, the ovaries and testes. Um, the pancreas. This guy's still got his pancreas. 
okay? The pancreas, long, skinny guy going that way. This is the spleen over here. The pancreas, though, long, skinny guy with a pancreatic duct in the middle of it. It sits right below and behind the stomach. Pancreas, so that's where your insulin and glucagon come from. So be able to identify those on the test. And there's, I think, one other thing here that you're going to want to know, and this is, this comes from, we're going to see this again in the GI portion of the test, but this is a main blood vessel. And this model is the only one that really shows it very well. And this is the hepatic portal vein. Now, a portal blood vessel takes it from one, one tissue to another, like going from the hypothalamus to the pituitary. It's that little portal system that goes from one port to another instead of going everywhere. Well, the hepatic portal vein brings all your nutrients from the intestines to the liver. Okay? So it's a vein because it's blue. So it's flowing this way back in the direction of the heart. And it's going from the intestines back toward the liver. So the liver has a hepatic artery that brings in fresh blood to it. But it also has a hepatic portal vein that brings blood from your intestines, bringing all of those nutrients back because your liver processes a lot of the nutrients from your digestive tract. So be able to identify the hepatic portal vein as well. I think that's got us. So, best of luck to all.